So today I'm going to bring the word of God to you in the topic of the gift of working of miracles. So miracles is what we need. The world needs miracles. Only God has the power to perform miracles. God is using you and I that believe in Him to perform miracles on this earth as well. To do the impossible things. He shows His love to us, to the world, through working miracles. If you are to look at the Bible, you could say the Bible is the Bible. You could say the Bible is the Word of God. You could say the Bible is the Word of God that have full of miracles after miracles. You see, in the book of Genesis, God created heaven and earth from nothing. He just speak and the earth come to existence. There's nothing then before that, but God speaks. And the power of the Word of God caused something to happen. Abraham, God tell Abraham to sacrifice his son to the Lord. Abraham obeyed the Lord. Take his son to the mountain. Prepare the altars. He bound to sacrifice his son. But the Lord performed miracles. He provided a ram. Moses. God used Moses to perform miracles. Ten plagues. And he parts the waters for the Israelites to walk through. God used Joshua to walk around the wall of Jericho. And the wall of Jericho comes down. God used Elijah. Elijah had performed 12 big miracles. Big miracles. Drought. He got fed by the raven. He increased the widow's, um, the widow's oil. The meal and oil. He raises the widow's son from the dead. A lot of miracles. And the Bible said, God even used Elisha. It does the spirit, spiritual son of Elijah with a double portion. God is the God of miracles. He uses you and I to perform miracles. Miracle is happening nowadays. You and I can receive miracles. You and I can receive the gift of doing performing miracles. You and I can see People performing miracles by believing in the Word of God. I'm going to read 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8 to 11. For to the one is given the Word of wisdom through the same, through the Spirit. To another, the Word of knowledge through the same Spirit. To another, faith. By the same Spirit, to another, gifts. Of healings. We talk about the gift of healings. Pastor Jason and Pastor Sota talk about it. The gift of healings. Gift of healing belong to you and I. God can heal us. He heal us because He loves us. He cares for us. He shows that He cares for us. And this week, I am sharing about to another the work, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, the discerning of the spirits. To another, different kinds of tongues. To another, interpretation of tongues. But one and the same spirit works all these things. Distributing to each one individually as he wills. So, the gifts from the Holy Spirit is given to the body of Christ. You and I could have this gift. You and I have the right to receive this gift through the grace of God and through faith 
in the Lord Jesus Christ. He is God, the generous. He shares his gifts so that every one of us can use this gift to benefit the body all over the world. This is powerful, my brothers and sisters. In the book of Mark, chapter 16, verse 15 to 18. And he said to them, go into the world, all the world, and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Jesus rise up again from the dead, and he tell the disciples, go to the whole world. And proclaim good news, proclaim gospel of hope, proclaim gospel of restoration to the people all over the world. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Whoever listens to the word that you preach using the word of God, whoever believes and baptized, they will be saved. But whoever does not believe will be condemned. They will be left behind. If they stop burning, if they don't want to receive, you and I, we need to receive the gift from God. It's good to receive it. Receive this gift. These gifts belong to us, belong to those who believe. Receive this gift that believe in my name, God said. Jesus Christ said in his name, they will cast out demons. The normal people, they have no power, have no authority, cannot cast out demons. Cannot. But God said, in my name, in my name, they will cast out demons. Meaning that God, through his name, he gave power to me, he gave power to you, to you all. You receive this power, and you have the right to cast out demons. Because demons not belong, not from God, not come from God. These demons come to oppress and cause depress in people's life. You and I that believe in God have the right. If you see anyone living in a depressed life, you have the right to command that spirit to live in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the word of God. This is the promise of the Lord said that. You cast out demons in my name. They will speak a new tongues. They will speak a new tongues. The new language that nobody knows in the world. Only God could direct us to speak these language. Which is the language that communicating with the heavenly God. But God also gives some people... They believe in Him, another gift, which is gift that translate these tongues as well. But today I am not talking about that. But if we speak a new tongues, when you speak a new tongues, the spiritual realm open up. Sometimes it requires you and I to know how to speak in tongue. This one day, I went to the province. I was you know, praying, go to pray for somebody. Pray for this lady who was in pain in her stomach for a long time. So, the minute we get to her home, you know, the, the, the pain left. It's gone. Wait a minute. What happened? Before we were there, the lady was in pain, and the lady said, you, would, you should have come to my house a long time ago and prayed for me so that I can live happily, so that I, the pain left me, I can sleep. But today, there's no more pain. I thought, I, I think to myself, it's a little weird. We just get to her, the lady's home, and the pain's gone. So no, I mean, let everyone that speak in tongue. Maybe some spirit was hiding. Guess what? Speak a new tongue. Speak in tongue as we speak. As we speak in tongue, we look at that lady's eyes is rolling around. It's a new tongue. It's confused. It causes fear. 
is open up the new realm of the spiritual realm that you don't know and we know. And that day we cast that demon that oppressed that lady that caused her to have the pain in her stomach by speaking in tongue. And the evil spirit in her exposed convulsion, shouted us, fight with us, punch us, and all that. But the spirit of God in us is stronger than the spirit that oppressed the lady. From that day on, the lady got set free. Verse 18, they pick up serpent with their hands. How many people, they have to pick up serpent, pick up snake, a cobra? No, don't do that, my brothers and sisters. But if you are to happen to be there and shock you and the serpent's there and try to bite you, you don't play with it, but you go away or you kill it or you command it to go away. If you are to accidentally bitten by the snake, it's okay. God could heal, heal you as well. Pick, uh, pick up serpent with their hands. And if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. Accidentally drink a poisonous, poisonous thing will not hurt them. They will lay hand on the sick and they will recover. This is the word of God. The word of God said he gave us power. He gave us authority. He gave us this gift to perform signs and wonders in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We can command the devil to leave. We can speak to the storm. We can speak to the situation to be gone in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. These gifts, my brothers and sisters, all available for all of us, belong to us. God is a generous God. He gave it to us. We can't use it. So the question is, how could we receive this gift of working miracles? How could we do that? Point number one, to receive this gift of miracles. Point number one, to connect it, to be connected to the source of miracles. You and I connected to the source of miracles. Who is the source of miracles? Jesus, the Holy Spirit. You and I connecting with Jesus. You and I get connecting with the Holy Spirit. Jesus and the Holy Spirit is the source of miracles. In the book of John, chapter 15, verse 5, Jesus said, I am the vine. You are the branches. He who abide in me and I in him bear much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Jesus said, I am the vine. Meaning, the vine and polos in Greek. And polos means Christ. Vine in part to its branches, sap, and productiveness. Vine connected to the branches, to the sap that cause life, that cause productiveness. The vine, the source, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Christ himself infused into his follower his own divine strength in life. As I said, nobody could perform signs and wonders only through the Lord Jesus Christ. And he said, he who abide in me, abide means stay connected, be connected, abide in me, abides in him, abides in the source, abides in Jesus, connected to Jesus, connected with the Holy Spirit. My brothers and sisters, in this life, every one of us, 
looking for productive in life, looking for fruitful life. But if we are not to be connected with Jesus, with the Holy Spirit, with the source, we're working really, really hard. It's tiring. It's difficult for us. Yes, we could produce something. Yes, for sure. But it takes a lot of strength, requires a lot of you. Could you imagine if you are to allow God to use you to work through you? Things would be a lot easier to receive these gifts of miracles. Number one, we connected to the source, which is Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Point number two. To receive the gift of working miracles, stay connected and be loyal to your spiritual leaders. Hey, by the way, do you have spiritual leaders? Who is your spiritual leaders? Who helps you? Who leads you? Who teaches you? Who coaches you? Who mentors you? Connected with the spiritual leader, and be loyal to them. In the book of 2 Kings, chapter 2, was 1 to 2. It's a story of Elijah and Elisha. Verse 1, now when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven, now it's time for Elijah to go to heaven. By a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. And Elijah said to Elisha, Please stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. You know, the, the, the mentor, the teacher, and the coach, Elijah said to Elisha, stay here. Elisha, but Elisha said, as the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. Elijah, tell Elisha, you stay here. I'm going to go to Bethel. Elisha recognized that I cannot do anything through this man of God. I need this man of God because this man of God helping me. I can't afford to let him go. And maybe God going to take him. I, I don't have him anymore. said, as long as the Lord live, you know, as the Lord live, as he himself live, he will not. Elisha said, I will not leave you. So they went together. This is so powerful. They stay together. If you are to continue the story, up to the point Elijah, Elijah said, if you are to see me going to heaven, you will get double portion. So Elisha keep his eyes on Elisha. He learned from his Spiritual leaders. He learned from his coach. He learned from his mentor. He learned to know God. He learned to have relationship with God. He learned the way to be connected with the source, with the Lord God. Therefore, the Bible said, Elisha have a double portion. He do more miracles than Elijah. Another story in the book of Ruth, this story is sad. Naomi, the, the mother-in-law, after going to live in another country, and they broke. Her husband dies. All of her sons die and have nothing else to do. She needs to return to her where she was born, Bethlehem. She tell her daughter-in-law, all of daughter-in-law, you go home. You go to your people. Go to your village. Go to your relatives. I'm going to go back to my village. I'm going to go back to my people. 
But in Ruth chapter 1 verse 16 and 17. But Ruth said to Naomi, Do not urge me to leave you or return from following you. My mom, my mother-in-law, my spiritual leaders, my mentor, my coach, do not demand me, do not urge me to leave you. No, I will not leave you. For where you go, I will go. This is powerful statement. For where you go, I will go. That Ruth said to Naomi. And where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people. And your God shall be my God. My brothers and sisters, when you marry to someone, you know, you adopt their family like your own family as well. You adopt their God. It's your God as well. But this one time, her husband died. No more husband. Naomi said, I don't have more ma uh, baby. I'm not married anymore. No baby. For you to get married to my kids, go home. But Ruth said, no. No, no, no. I will go where you go. I will live where you live. You die, I die. I'm going to read uh, verse 17. Where you die, I will die. And where and there will I be buried. May the Lord do so to me. And more also, if anything but death parts me from you. Only death can part me from you, mom. Only death can part me, take me apart from my spiritual leaders. Only death can take me away from my coach. No way I'm going to stick to the coach, my brothers and sisters. When we believe in God, God has placed some people in our lives. We have friends, we have peers, we have a, you know, a, a, a godly family, a spiritual family, and also we have a spiritual father, spiritual mother, spiritual leader, and spiritual coach, and spiritual mentor. You stick to that, and you will see great things happen. The miracle is, as you continue to read the story, follow the story. You see that Ruth is the ancestor of King David, and David is the ancestor's of Jesus Christ. This is powerful statement. And Ruth said that, and she followed what she said. Stick to the spiritual leader and be loyal to them. Point number three, to receive this work of miracles, get yourself into God anointing. Get yourself into God anointing. In the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 45. And while staying with them, he ordered God, Jesus Christ, after he, he rise, you know, from the dead, he was with disciple. He told the disciple, ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem. Do not leave Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father. Wait. When you believe in God, you wait for God to give you direction. We as a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, we need to wait for the direction of the Lord. It's good to receive the direction. It's also good to follow the direction of of the Lord. God says, stay in Jerusalem. Do not go anywhere. There is a gift from the Father. There's a gift from the Father given to you, which He said, You heard from me, for John baptized with water, 
but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Not many days from now. Just wait. Not many days from now. The Holy Spirit, God, will give you the Spirit. The Spirit will come and will benefit you. This is what the Lord Jesus Christ tell the disciple. In Acts chapter 1, verse uh, 7 to 8, he said to them, It is not for you to know the time or season that the Father has fixed by his own authority. God has his own agenda. You just trust in God. Wait for God to fill us. But you will receive the power when the Holy Spirit have come upon you. And you will be my witness in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. My brothers and sisters, stay connected with the source. Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit. Stay connected with your spiritual leaders and learn from them. And get anointing from God and wait on God. Receive from God. And God can give you that power. When you receive that power and you can feel in you, you are a different person. That power will overcome your power. And your, that power help you to live your life, to direct you to walk a better path. Believe me, this is powerful. Point number four, it's the last point. To receive the gift of working miracles, start practicing your gifts, these gifts that was given by the Holy Spirit. Practicing. You believe God by faith that the Lord God gave you the authority, gave you the power to do these miracles, and you believe in God. And when you see the sick people, and so I pray for you later, pray for them there, right there. If somebody was sick, pray for them. If you see a person have fever, pray for them. If you see a person have headache, pray for them. If you see, see them have a, how you call it, it's a, it's leper, you know, pray for them. If you see a, a handicapped people, pray for them. If you see the dead people, pray for them. Who knows? God could use you. If you see the drought, pray for the, for, pray for the rain. I see a lot of miracles by praying. Do you want to see it happen? It might be nothing happened yet for the pray, first prayer, but it's okay. Keep believing. You will see signs. You will see wonders. I see it a lot. This one day, you know, we went to the ocean, and we crossed the ocean, and we go evangelize at this one place. And then we promised with the other people in the other village, say, at 2 o'clock, we're going to go to your village. At 2 o'clock, we are about to get on the boat, go to the other village. The storms come. The gentleman that drive the boat said, we cannot go. It's a dark cloud like this, we can't go. Some of us in the boat crying because it's a cloud's coming. Dark cloud, it's a big storm. But we promise that we go to the other village. We tell the people over there, we tell the people in the boat, we need to go. Guess what? We stand and we command the storm to go away. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the storm, listen to us. In the book of Acts, chapter 20, verse 9 to 11, this one time, the apostle Paul preached, and he teach at night, and he rest teaching, he teach everything, because the next day he had to leave. But up to the point of late. Acts chapter 20, verse 9 to 11. And a young man named Ju, Eutychus, sitting at the window, 
sank into a deep sleep. As Paul talked still longer and being overcome by the sleep, that guy is fall, uh, falling asleep. He fell down from the third story and was taken up, taken up dead. A person said, wait a minute, there's a person fall off the door, the window. When they go see the person, it's dead. It's dead. He's dead. He died already. Verse 10. But Paul went down and bent over him and taking him in his arms said, Do not be alarmed for his life is in him. Don't be afraid. He is alive now by the working miracles and when Paul had gone up and had broken bread and eaten he conversed with them a long while until they break and so departed Paul have his agenda he works sometimes he work all day long and another time he works all night long. You know, sometimes the devil wants to distract us from doing great things for God. But Paul still takes the time to go down and raise the guy from the dead. I believe that's the first time that the Apostle Paul raised a person from the dead. Ladies and gentlemen, you could do it. The gifts of working miracles belong to us. Could I pray for you this afternoon? Anyone that is watching me, you might need these miracles happen in your life. A miracle of finance, a miracle of having a baby, you don't have the baby, a miracle of breakthrough in whatever area that you needed, a miracle of healing or whatever. I believe these miracles is given to us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord God, Lord God, you see, Lord God, your sons and your daughters waiting to receive this gift of miracles and to receive these miracles from you. Lord, in the mighty name, of our Savior, Jesus Christ. You said, ask anything in my name, and I will do it. Lord, if they need healing, Lord God, heal them, Lord God. If they need the miracles of finance, Lord God, supply that, Lord God. For Paul said, my Lord supplies all of my need. Lord God, if they need the miracle of breakthrough, whatever that's needed, Lord God, fulfill that, Lord God. Lord God, I believe it. I released it in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you.